the market today. But let's get some more perspective on exactly uh, all of these trends and more. Gautam Baird, Equity Advisor at Complete uh, Stellar Wealth PMS is with us. Gautam, it's a pleasure to have you back on our shows. And uh, we're speaking at a very interesting time. As I said, I think everyone's watching these two things very carefully, that U.S. yield, which refuses to go down, and the dollar. What have you made of uh, these uh, sort of global uh, headwinds, if I could call them? And uh, what could the impact perhaps be for Indian equities? Hi, hi, uh, Surabhi. Hi, Rima. Thank you for having me on your show. And you're absolutely right. Whenever there is such a very sharp surge in the short run in the U.S. 10-year yield, we just saw the 10-year yield going from 4.6% to 4.85% in a matter of two and a half days. That is generally when some big accident takes place in the financial markets. And the global markets are now adjusting to the fact that the Federal Reserve is very steely in its resolve and they're going to hold rates higher for longer. If you see the latest dot plot by the Federal Reserve, they've already reduced the rate cut guidance for next year from 100 basis points to 50 basis points. So the market has basically quickly adjusted to that particular revised guidance. So in the short run, the global markets and the Indian markets are facing, facing a trinity of challenges. The dollar index is at a yearly high. The 10-year yield is, a, is at a yearly high. And most importantly, crude oil. India imports 80% of its crude oil requirement that is past $90 per barrel. And historically, whenever there has been a sharp surge in crude oil prices, mid caps and small caps tend to underperform in the short run because their working capital and margins get badly impacted. So I think once the quarter two earnings season is over and management commentary gives the street an indication of lowered margin guidance for the upcoming quarters, you'll see a lot of downgrades coming in and it will become a very narrow stock-specific market. So this is the time to actually put your head down, get to work, and look at those companies which have got very good earnings visibility and valuation support. Mm. Uh, Gotham, uh, hi, morning. So before we get to those uh, picks where there is earning visibility, there is some value, the valuations are still fairly reasonable, just a quick answer. Uh, is there a possibility that we could see that accident in the global markets? U.S. markets have already corrected 7 to 8% from their highs in just a matter of about two months. Uh, maybe in the next six months, do you get the sense that U.S. markets is not going to be as rosy and that could precipitate a sell-off in the Indian markets? Well, absolutely, Rima. If you look at the easiest way to assess whether a big accident is about to take place uh, globally in the financial markets is to track what the banking stocks in the U.S. are doing. So just look at how Wells Fargo and Citigroup stocks are just falling apart in the United States. So that is telling you that there is a big pain point there. Last October, if you recall, uh, when Credit Suisse, you know, credit default spreads went through the roof, it was a precursor to them eventually going bust uh, a few months later. So right now, if you look at the banking stocks in the US, it is clearly painting a picture of very high stress in the banking system. Just to give you some number, uh, and as of 30th June, the unrealized losses on the investment securities book for the US financial sector was northward of $600 billion. And right now, you because of the high duration of this 10-year yield. So when the 10-year yield moves, even by 10 basis points, it has 10 times the impact compared to a move of a same magnitude in the two-year yield. So the longer the duration, the higher the impact on this unrealized losses on the investment security book of the U.S. financial sector. Mm, okay, fair point. Yeah, and we've seen some of those jitters play out earlier this year, right, Gautam? Uh, and then kind of moved on. We had uh, some closures, some accidents. Let's see what happens this time around. Uh, let's shift the conversation back home here to our market. And let me actually start with financials because uh, while obviously there's, there's no reason to worry, rising yields are not absolutely directly uh, linked with bank or NBFC profitability here, though one can argue that, you know, there is a play on local yields as well. But in general, uh, barring PSU banks, Financials have taken a backseat. Last three months has not been about financials in the Indian market. What's your sense on this trend? And uh, if you would look to buy anything here, what would it be? So I think it will be in an uh, environment of rising interest rates globally. You want to look for pockets within financials, which have got, which have got pricing power. So in particular, microfinance companies, select small finance banks, which have got pricing power, which enjoy very high net interest margins. That is basically where you want to place your bets because if you place your bet on a lender which has got a small net interest margin or a small spread, 
then those spreads get compressed very quickly in a rising interest rate environment. So look for companies which have got strong pricing power with their customers, which have got a granular customer base, and which can you know, exercise increasing and passing on the rate increases to their customers. And in this particular space, you know, at Stellar Wealth PMS, we are very bullish on small finance banks and microfinance companies. Within uh, NBFCs and uh, small finance banks, we are very bullish on Ujjivan Small Finance Bank and Five Star Business Finance in particular. Do you want to tell us why Ujjivan Small Finance Bank and Five Star? What is it amongst the entire pack that attracted you to these two? So we are playing the Ujjivan Small Finance Bank uh, through the holding company, Ujjivan Financial. It's a special situation of a reverse merger in which currently there is a merger arbitrage discount of 17%. There is going to be a, for every uh, one single share of Ujjivan Financial, you will get 11.6 shares of Ujjivan Small Finance Bank. So if you just do the simple math, right now there is a 17% uh, arbitrage discount on the table. In addition to that, just look at the guidance which Ujjivan Small Finance Bank has given for FI24. 25% loan book growth, 22% return on equity, credit, credit costs less than 1%. And you know those are the best in class in that particular small finance bank space. And you're getting all of this at a price to book of less than two times. Now, there is a reason why it's getting a lower price to book multiple because 70% of Ujjivan's book is in micro loans, which is very vulnerable since they cater to the bottom of the pyramid segment. And also the MD Itera Davis will be resigning in January 2025. So since management is paramount in a financial institution, so that's mm. so six months leading up to that event, you will probably see some volatility in the share price of Ujjivan. So that's the reason for oral thesis for Ujjivan Financial. As regards five-star business finance, this is a company that gives you the best of both worlds, the high ROA or high return on asset of a microfinance company and the low credit costs backed by the secured nature of its lending. So you get the secured nature of a housing finance lender with the net interest margins and ROA for microfinance company. This And you can judge how good a lender is by how they behave during up cycles and down cycles. So between FI15 and FI20, five-star business finance accelerated their lending and grew their AUM sure. at a KGC of 100%. Sure. But, but between FI20 and 22, it slowed down their lending to just 14%. So okay. very prudent. Okay, Gautam, Gautam, sorry to come in over there. Actually, there's a very interesting event at which the SEBI chairperson is speaking. This event is, uh, you know, uh, from the RIA community, the Registered Investment Advisor community. And uh, Ms. Butch is speaking there. And in fact, she's talking about that big debate. Investment advisors feel it's too cumbersome to register. Compliances are too onerous. And then there's a Finfluencer debate. So let's see what she's saying. 